Breaking news, a UAP disclosure fund has emerged on June 1st. Some heavy hitters are involved in it, including Lou Elizondo and Carl Nell. Matt Ford of The Good Trouble Show revealed this new fund with the following tweet. I'm pleased to publicly announce my position as Director of Strategy for the UAP Disclosure Fund at UAPDF. It is my distinct pleasure to be a member of our all-star team. Mr. Lou Elizondo, Board of Directors. Dr. Gary Nolan, Board of Directors. Colonel Carl Nell, Board of Directors. Mr. C Christopher Mellon, Advisory Board. Mr. Kirk McConnell, Advisory Board. Mr. Juan Fong, Executive Director. Ms. Leslie Duckworth, Chief Financial Officer. The UAP Disclosure Fund is a nonpartisan political nonprofit 501c4 that advocates for greater government transparency regarding unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP. We work to support new UAP legislation, provide legal representation for whistleblowers, promote scientific research, and raise public awareness to better address the UAP issue. Now is the time for you to take action. Let the U.S. Senators who co-sponsored the UAP Disclosure Act of 2024 know that you support that, including a new version of the UAP Amendment in the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA. It's simple to make your voice heard. Visit our website, sign the petition, and join us in our mission for greater government transparency on UAP, UAPDisclosureFund.org. Lou Elizondo followed up with this tweet. I am very pleased to be part of this amazing organization. Together, we will prevail in our pursuit of truth on disclosure. Let's take a quick look at the website. Here are the photos of the team members of the UAP Disclosure Fund. And if you're interested, you can sign the petition. I did. Beyond everything I covered, I really don't know what the impact the UAP Disclosure Fund will have. It, of course, remains to be seen. Nevertheless, considering the stakes and how hard it is to get UAP transparency, I think it is absolutely wonderful there is a way to donate money to support UAP legislation, provide legal representation for whistleblowers, promote scientific research, and raise public awareness to better understand the UAP issue. Some people may be squeamish about this, thinking it's some kind of money grab. I'm, however, thoroughly unconvinced of that proposition. I think this is a signal boost for a great cause, as Kelly Chase put it. Look, the UAP Disclosure Act got defeated last year by a few members in the House. And unfortunately, I think the only way to get to the bottom of the long-standing allegations that the U.S. government is covering up UFO reality is through groundbreaking legislation. Barring the phenomena opening, openly revealing itself in some kind of mass sighting, we need to force the truth out through legislation. Alex Klokas asked former Colonel Carl Nell if UFO disclosure is inevitable. He asked this on May 22nd, 2024. And so I guess I'm, I'm curious, if we continue down this disclosure path, do you believe that disclosure is inevitable? So, again, people that sort of look at this topic and study it, and there have been some, some good um, examinations on this from a historical standpoint, have realized that, like, we're not in a, really a new state. Like, this sort of disclosure emphasis has come and gone over time. And so this is not the first time we've arrived at this stage. I, I, I would suggest that maybe the peak of this current cycle happened last December with the Schumer Amendment, and then it got rolled back and was defeated in the House. And so it remains to be seen, you know, if the process could continue. One hopes and, and can maybe draw a little bit of um, uh, confidence that maybe this will come around is the colloquy that uh, Senator Schumer and Senator Rounds had back in December. After their amendment got killed, they basically went on the Senate floor and articulated their rationale for the legislation 
And I think uh, Senator Schumer, to quote him, almost said it was a travesty that this did not pass. So this is, you know, a bipartisan colloquy on a topic that I guess most people would probably consider fringe, and yet these two senators felt the need to do that and to double down on their a desire to see this through. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see maybe a reintroduction of some version of that this summer uh, with the goal of maybe putting it into the NDAA by the end yeah. of the year. So I think the following clip is what former Colonel Carl Nell is referencing where Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer talks about his great disappointment that the UAP Disclosure Act did not get passed. It is really an outrage the House didn't work with us on adopting our proposal for a review board, which of course by definition here is bipartisan in the Senate. Now it means that declassification of UAP records will be largely up to the same entities that have blocked, obfuscated their disclosure for decades. We will keep working. I want to assure the American people, Senator Rounds and I will keep working to change the status quo. Carl Nell said that um, hopefully there'll be a reintroduction of some version of the UAP Disclosure Act this summer putting it into the NDA by the end of the year. Well, lo and behold, uh, Congressman Robert Garcia dropped the following tweets on May 31st, 2024. I'm offering three UAP amendments for the National Defense Authorization Act. We must continue to responsibly push for safe reporting of UAPs and bring that transparency to the public. This is critical for our national security. My First Amendment creates a UAP reporting mechanism for civilian pilots. My Second Amendment includes UAP disclosure provisions from last year that were blocked, including a UAP records review board. My Final Amendment ensures Aero has access to co con covert intel for investigations. Convert intel. For the proposed new language for the UAP Disclosure Act 2.0, 2.0, shall we say, Tiny Klaus pointed out that it's wild that the following is the first qualification required by Congress for a presidentially appointed Senate-confirmed panel. Let's read the exact quote in the proposed UAP Disclosure Act 2.0 that Tiny Klaus, Klaus is referencing. Qualifications, persons nominated to the review board, shall be impartial citizens, none of whom shall have had any previous or current involvement with any legacy program or controlling authority relating to the collection, exploitation, or reverse engineering of technologies of unknown origin or the examination of biological evidence of living or deceased non-human intelligence. Now, this doesn't surprise me because there are so many interests that so strongly are against this getting out that they definitely don't want anyone on the review board connected with UFO crash retrieval and exploitation programs because then they could influence what gets declassified and what doesn't get declassified and these are the these are the people we we really don't want on the review board because they have self interest that is in contradiction to the interest of the American public and frankly the world at large. So let's finish off with this tiny Klaus tweet he wrote on uh, June second, twelve o three a.m. This subject needs more funding. Announcing the UAP disclosure fund? No, not like that. And I think he's he's responding to people who are cynical about this new uh, effort called UAP Disclosure Fund. It's like for the longest time, many people, people rightfully so, have complained that there's not some kind of central repository to put money into fighting against the cover-up. So this comes along and then the same people who are saying we need to put more money into fighting against the cover-up are like, oh, this is so bad. Or whatever their criticisms are. And it's like, we got to do something. Do you want to go to your grave? 
with the secrecy continuing? Or alternatively, do you want to see humankind's spirit unleashed with the introduction of the reality of our cosmos? I mean, when I first started my channel, I will admit to some extent I was naive in the sense that I thought disclosure could come more easily than reality demonstrated. The amount of interests that are, that are adamant about keeping and maintaining the status quo, the threats that they're willing to go through with toward whistleblowers, potentially towards other people, maybe even members of Congress, bribes, who knows what's going on, but we know for a fact that threats are going on. It's the, the secrecy has persisted for so long, and I thought we could get disclosure sooner. And we are six years post the de December 16th, 2017 New York Times article that accelerate the disclosure process and we've made tremendous ground but the pushback and the resistance to the biggest secret in humankind being revealed is quite significant and i underestimated that pushback and that resistance early on in my youtube channel and i'm i'm much more realistic with that Presently, that doesn't mean I think we'll never get disclosure, nor does it mean that I don't think we'll get disclosure soon. I think we will get disclosure soon. But again, we're six years into it now. So six years of developments, whistleblowers coming forward, UFO hearings occurring, members of Congress going public and complaining about the cover up, it being covered more in the mainstream media. A lot of developments had to happen to get us to where we are today. And I do think we'll get disclosure. It's just that it wasn't going to happen, you know, right after the December 16th, 2017 New York Times article. Do I think we'll get it within a few years or less? Yes, I do. But it's going to be a big, big fight. And because it's going to be such a big fight, we should all, in my opinion, be welcoming it with open arms the UAP Disclosure Fund organization because we need all of the help we can get. Please do not forget to subscribe. A lot of new content is going to get published this month and as we progress. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All those potentialities can be accessed in the description box below. Or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I would appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me a one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.